you, thank you. I'm so happy to see y'all, and thank you for showing me all of that love. Oh my God, I appreciate you so much. Woo, chai. <laughs> I'm gonna sit on the, hey, y'all mind if I take a little sip real quick? <laughs> Yes, I always, my baby made me this, this mug. It's real special. Ah. <laughs> I needed a little sip. Woo, you know what? Sometimes I just love to just sit back and take in the moments like this, you know? Woo. Now, y'all first met me, at least most people, Way back on a show called American Idol. Anybody remember that? Cha, cha, cha. We have been on the journey. I said I hopped on that American Idol roller coaster and I've been going ever since. It has its, yes, it has its highs, its lows, and its in betweens, but I am so grateful. I do not take any of it lightly. I am just blessed and, and odd to be able to take such a journey with such beautiful people. I feel like everybody has been a part of, of my stardom and, and, and me coming into my dreams. And I feel as though you all are a part of my dream. And even starting this talk show, you know, it's like, wow, it's a, it's a new chapter. But I feel like just like when I started on Idol, everyone took that journey with me. So now we're on a new journey. You know what I mean? And another thing is, I feel like God told me, I'm going to use your voice. And that's not just in singing. And I feel like my biggest duty and what I do is, or my favorite thing about it is to be able to see others being blessed from your blessings. And I've been blessed to achieve a lot of things. I never would have guessed that I would make it this far. Just being a little young seven-year-old girl saying I'm gonna be a singer and I'm gonna be famous and having my first solo in church that I would be able to do so many things. And, but again, it means nothing if you can't help somebody else, you know? And, and that's my favorite thing about having a talk show is because now it allows me the opportunity to give others an opportunity and shine the spotlight on them. I want to get ready to do that and bring out my first guest. At the age of just 10 years old, she's already bringing down the house with her powerful vocals from Louisiana. Please welcome 10 year old Ava Johnson. Hi, Ava. Hey. You are so gorgeous. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for being here. And before I go any further, I. I can't wait to see you perform in a little bit. I'm so excited about it. But girl, I love your outfit from head <laughs> to Thank toe. You. you look amazing. Thank you. Oh my God. Okay, okay. So I've seen all your videos of you performing. Your voice is so powerful. Like, where do you get your voice from? I have been singing all my life. I sing with my mom, my aunt. My grandmother, it, it, singing is just something that runs in the family. Wow. Wow, so you say your whole life. Now you're just 10. <laughs> so, <laughs> just 10. You, so like, now you're touring with the Tina Turner musical? Yes, ma'am. Oh my God, you're young and May, huh? <laughs> Congratulations. Yes, Thank you. <laughs> What's your reaction to getting that role? I was ecstatic, let me tell you. I could not, I couldn't think straight. I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm gonna be playing young anime and I remember that it's a Broadway production. And I was like, I've always wanted to be on Broadway. Like, this is my dream. Like, oh my God, I'm really <laughs> doing this. Like, I'm gonna be on Broadway. <laughs> and so I had to remember that I was playing young anime. Wow. And that, that had to bring me into my inner character and help me process what she would do in church, what she would do in certain, certain spaces. So I had to learn more about her. Well, I, I know you're doing an amazing job, young lady. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. You've been blessed to achieve a lot of great things at such a young age. What's your dream job? My dream job is to be a movie star. And you, oh. you oh. are <laughs> one of the best You 
are known by the nation. You inspire me. I bet you inspire my family, everyone. Mm -hmm. You are so amazing. And I want to be just like Thank you. Ava, that means the world to me. Our next guest is an Emmy and Grammy Award winning musical genius who I've had the pleasure of working with. Please welcome Robert Glasper. First of all, welcome to the happy place. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for being here. Before we start, I have to do something. Okay. I've seen this all my life on talk shows. What's that? And I've never gotten a chance to do it. <laughs> 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 yeah, just want to do that. Just want to do that. Did, was it everything you thought it was going to be? It was great. It was, it was great? Yeah, it was amazing. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, he got yeah, that yeah. off his chest. Absolutely. I absolutely. love you for that. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you know when was the last time we ran into each other, saw each other? I saw you at my show at the Blue Note Jazz Club. Ah, you are My right. residency. Yes. Yes. And it was amazing. It was great. It was great seeing you there. Yeah. Oh. Do you remember the first time we met? Actually, I think I came to see you. With Kelly Rowland. With Kelly, exactly. And that day you threw me up there. I did throw you on stage. <laughs> and then I was introduced to your beautiful artistry and music, and then I ended up on this album. Boom. That you like just Radio won. 3. You just won a Grammy for. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, it was an honor to have you on there. It was an honor to be on there. Thank you for yeah. having and me. And it was hard because it was during COVID right. time. You know, and usually I'm used to being in the studio with the artists right. and doing, bouncing off ideas and getting the vibe and everything. Mm -hmm. But this time around, I was in, in the house, in the living room, and having to send music to people. And I was singing from and the house. And you were so gracious. Absolutely, you were singing from the house. And she was so gracious, like, yeah, I'll do it. And I sent you the idea. Yes. And you sent it back, knocked it out. Did I do all right? Oh, my God. We won the Grammy, didn't we? Give me five. <laughs> But listen, okay, so you got, you already got an Emmy yep. and a Grammy. It sounded to me you going, you halfway to that EGOT. Come on now. Come, you, hey. Touch and agree. Hey, hey, come on. Look, I, really, <clears throat> I wanted to get a P-GOT. Oh, 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 okay. Because I got a Peabody Award, too. Come on. So I want to go, I'm, I'm, I'm for a P-GOT. Oh, you changing the game I'm on fine. us. I think there's only five P-GOTs in the world, like four or five P-GOTs. Wow. Yeah, so if I get if I become a P-Got, I'm going to be a really big deal then. Okay, what I got? I'll still come back to you, though. I'll still come back here. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're in the lane <laughs> on your own, because you've worked with legends from Herbie Hancock to Stevie Wonder. What in the world is that like? Well, I love teaching people, you know, and... <laughs> Where is he going with this? When Herbie and Stevie said, Robert, could you please <laughs> show me something? Um, no, no, it's, that's, it's a dream come true to be able to literally work with the people you grew up. Like, yeah. those are my two, those are the two for me. You know what I mean? Yes. I've had the, the privilege of working with both of them. Um, but, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But having, like, people like Herbie and Stevie, they, they are music, right? Yeah. And then you follow in the footsteps. Absolutely. What do you do or you feel you have done different to be able to separate yourself and then, you know, follow behind that? Well, I just, I try to just be honest with who I am and myself always. Because if, you, you know, I'd rather be the, the worst ver version of myself ver than the, the best version of somebody else. You know what I mean? Well said. You know. Okay, so this summer you're performing in Napa. Yes. Tell us about the Blue Note Jazz Festival, yes. and I'm going to this, yes. baby. I better come. Listen, so, <clears throat> this is my type of zush right here. <laughs> it, started off, it started off because of my residency at the Blue Note, the uh -huh. Robtober, we call it, when I do every October for like four or five weeks in, at the Blue Note in New York City. So last year was our first time. We did it last year in Napa. Dave Chappelle hosts it. I play every night, and we have all these amazing special guests. This year we have... Nas, Mary J. Blige, De La Soul, Chance the Rapper, like <clears throat> Jennifer Hudson. Y'all go and put me on the program. <laughs> I'm coming up in this joint. Oh yeah, oh this yeah. This is amazing. Yeah, it's so fun. It's so fun. And the thing about this festival that's different from other festivals is that you'll see different artists that performed already jump on stage with this artist, mm. and that person jump on stage with that artist. So you're actually seeing collaborations in real time that probably will never happen again, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, really, it's really fun, because you don't know what's going to happen, you know? 
Well, man, I will be there to see what's gonna happen. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Next you time you right. come, you're gonna have to get over there and play that piano. Absolutely, we got to, for sure. Okay, <laughs> for more information on the Blue Note Jazz Festival, go to our website. We'll be right back. Memorial Day is right around the corner, and a lot of people are going to be using their grills, grills this weekend. So I asked our friend Melanie from Melanie's Bake Shop to come teach us some new recipes for your family barbecue. Come on out here, Melanie. Hi. Hi. Wonderful. Ooh, it's already smelling good. Oh, my God. So Memorial Day weekend yes. coming up. Lots of barbecues happening. Thanks to Pillsbury, I brought a bunch of quick and delicious recipes that we can actually, believe it or not, throw on the grill. Oh. Yes, we can get outside and enjoy some family time. I love that. All right, so let's get into it. Okay. All right, we are going to start. Everybody loves grilling a hot dog, right? So we have a turkey dog for you. Um, mm. But Pillsbury's adding a twist. So who needs hot dog buns when you have crescent rolls, right? Okay. So we're going to be making grilled crescent dogs. Nice. All right, so let's get into it. So would you like me to serve you a dog, ma'am? Yes, yes. Oops. I got there it. Go. All right. So what we're gonna do is just take a hot dog, any kind, beef, chicken, and you're gonna take just some American cheese and cut it into strips, mm -hmm. all right? And then put like two or three, you're actually gonna cut a little slit in the hot dog so right I'm there. put it in the yep, slit. and you're just gonna stick it in the slit. Oh. Two, three, however cheesy or not cheesy you want it. I like light cheese. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so you got it there. I th Can you tell you I'm not a good? nails in there. So I call <laughs> Melanie. You're doing great. Okay. All right, so you got it in there. All right, so then we're just gonna roll. Okay. This, I'm, st I'm glad. Look at you. I'm You're just a natural with Pillsbury. It's those crescent it. rolls, I'm telling you. You've been practicing all season. Look at that. All right, great. So now we're ready to throw them on the grill, right? Mm, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab some cooking spray. All right. Uh-huh. And we're gonna spray some heavy-duty foil. It, this one's double thickness, just so when we transfer it to the grill. And we're gonna be using a method called indirect heat grilling, which is essentially, you're gonna turn on just one side of the grill, okay? Okay. And then we're actually going to put the food on the other side, so the heat's not directly under it, but we're gonna then close the lid, and it's essentially gonna turn your grill into an oven. So that's how we're gonna make all of these delicious oh, culinary treats. so you put it yeah. on the side of it. Yeah, so we're gonna put them here, and do you wanna take it to yes. the grill? I wanna feel like I'm doing something. Very exciting. Okay. So this is the side we're gonna to wanna to put on. So we is turn this good? side on. Okay, and then you're just gonna close the lid. Okay. Bake at medium heat. All these are medium heat, about 350 degrees. These are gonna bake for about 12 to 15 minutes. And then we're gonna take them out and voila, they're gonna look just like mm. this. That one's yours on top if you wanna taste Ooh, it. I do. And we have some mustard for you. I know you, you know I love mustard some mustard. Right okay. <laughs> Y'all ain't want none, did you? <laughs> okay. Cheers. That's so good, man. That's a crescent roll. I'm telling you. That's good. Mm -hmm. You know it's good when I don't want to put it down. All right, I'll keep it. All right, but so we'll move on. So we're out here grilling, right? <laughs> and these are gonna, these right here are our stuffed crescent rolls. Stuffed crescent rolls. Okay. Let me finish showing. Okay. See? And so we are gonna be making, actually, these are, since we're on the grill, we're gonna mm -hmm. be making grilled barbecue chicken crescents. Ooh. Okay, I know. That sounds so, really good. So what we're gonna do, it's so easy. These are just, we're gonna fill, roll, and grill. All right, so you're gonna take some chicken. If you wanna take a little bit of chicken and just put it right here on the crescent roll. Yeah, put your hand in there. You can use the tongs. I don't know. Okay. Make sure your hands are clean. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of that. Yes. Put it right in the middle, yep. And then we're gonna add, I'm gonna use barbecue sauce, but I know you like something a little different. My version of barbecue sauce is mustard and splendor. Mm, okay. Hey, to each their own, okay? That's so we've right. got that for you. We've got some splenda and mustard. So I'll put right the there. sauce on Yep, so we're gonna go ahead and actually, I'm sorry. Put the chicken in there. Put the you chicken know, in there. We all make a here. little mistake. Yep, we're right here. Put the chicken in there. And we're actually, this is just gonna make it easier. We're gonna put the barbecue sauce in and okay. get your mustard. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry. All right. See, I'm throwing you off. I ain't as quick as you. But that's okay, because it's so easy with Pillsbury. All of this stuff is just, they make it so simple. And if you mess up, you can fix it. Okay, and then I put this in here, mm -hmm. right? Yep, however much you want. Oh, wait, this is mine. So I could put all the splendor I want in there. That's splendor for you. <laughs> oh, I'm, I got this. To each their own? That's the, you know, everybody can do what they want. I think it's gonna be sweet. All right, so then mix it up. Add a little cheese if you want. I think I need a little more chicken and cheese. You want me to see it for you? I, I got yeah. the hang of this. Yes, ma'am. See, there you go, see? You got this. All right, and then we're just gonna, once it's all mixed up, then we're gonna put it on our crescent roll. Okay, okay. All right. Yep, you got it. Ooh, Lord. That's a, that's a hefty one. That's, that's yeah. a bit thick. It's okay. Should I right. put some back? Well, you know what? It's, yeah. 
Great. Okay. Roll it up. It's just gonna ooze out goodness. And that's why we have our nice double foil. You just said ooze out goodness. Yeah. I like that. All right, and again, we always wanna spray it. We don't want stuff to stick, so. This is like our little disposable pan right here. And we're gonna go and stick them right on there. Okay. Okay. And these are gonna go on the grill a little bit longer this time. They're gonna go like 19 to 22 minutes. 19 to 22. Um, yours is right there on the top. There you go. Yep, let's do it. Okay. Yeah, I want some. Uh -huh. Let me see how I do it. It's good. Mm -hmm. I could put a little bit more mustard in there, though. Okay. Just a little bit more. Oh. All right, there we go. When you think you gave me enough mustard, give me some more. <laughs> okay. All right, good. You can keep eating if you want, but we can move on here. So, have you ever grilled a pizza before? No. It's so good. Yeah, all right? Okay, audience knows. All right, so we're going to make grilled pepperoni pizza crescent rolls. That's okay. Good. And Jennifer, what do you like on your pizza? Peppers. Peppers. Okay, so we have some, we happen to have, oddly enough, jalapeno peppers, some chicken sausage, and some bell peppers for you. Mm -hmm. Add it all, add a little bit. So whatever you like. Yeah, but that's, again, the beauty of Pillsbury. Everybody can kind of make their own little, there's no more fighting about pizza toppings. Everybody can make I their own. Pills, okay. All right, so do that, and then I'm going to add, I love cheese, I love mozzarella cheese. I'm supposed to use the spoon, ain't I? Where are your hands? Whatever makes you happy, Jennifer. I like it's that. That's right. <laughs> then I put this on there. Right? Well, we're gonna dip. So let's first let's just roll these up like we've done everything else. So easy. I need some cheese. Yep. Roll it up. Get the cheese in there. Okay. Again, we're gonna spray our foil. Place it on there. Put it in the grill. These are gonna bake at medium heat again for about 13 to 17 minutes. Pop them on there, and then our finished product here. Go ahead and get that. All right, go ahead. Okay. Please. That's yours on the top. All right. And if you want, you can dip now in our warm Oh, and then you sauce. dip it yep. in the oh, sauce. Yeah. I like that. So good. Let's see. Mm. This is like a, this is a pizza. It is a pizza. And you're spending that time outside of your family, grilling. It's fantastic. Oh, I'm finna grill them. Right. Damn. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. my God. I like that. Yeah, it's good. It's, I mean, can't go wrong. Feels very. All right, so now, but now we've done the savory, it's time for something sweet, right? And yes. Pillsbury is doing something really special. So these are our salute to service cookies and toaster strudels, all right? And Pillsbury, again, is doing something really special for military families. Um, they believe every family deserves a place to call home. Hmm. And so they are partnering with Operation Homefront. And thanks to this partnership, Operation Homefront has been able to buy homes for veterans and their families. And <laughs> as a daughter of a vet, shout out to my dad, Wayne. Hmm. It's really special. Yes. Yeah. And also, everyone at home can help. So when you purchase specially marked packages of the Salute to Service cookie dough and toaster strudel, enter the code on the back at pillsbury.com slash mission, and Pillsbury will make a donation for you. So. I love Hi. that. And thanks to Pillsbury, you're all going home with fresh baked Salute to Service cookies. <laughs> Thank you, Pillsbury. We'll be right back. Our next guest is a life and relationship coach who always comes with practical advice that works. And today she's here to talk about how to deal with hitting a rough patch in a relationship. Please welcome Rhea Williams. What is, one, what is the biggest advice you have for couples who, you know, who need help for, uh, in, within the relationships? You know, Jennifer, here's the thing, you know, to becoming one, even if you're not even on the marriage track quite yet, and marriage is not for everyone, but in any relationship, operating systems meet, you fall in love, but that does not mean that you all align in terms of how you operate. So I like to use, you know, I'm from the Make It Plain ministry, <laughs> so I like okay. to speak very plain, my examples, but it's like if you've been operating in a certain way or, you know, just how you do things, how you receive things, and then you meet someone, it doesn't automatically mean that you will align. So that's where I feel so honored to journey with individuals and couples, you know, because everyone is not necessarily on a love journey, um, but just to help navigate that and to figure out if there's some reconditioning, some reprogramming, deprogramming, because some of us, including myself, you know, you're, we're wired in a certain way. Yeah. And you just never know, you know? So that's the beauty about relationships in general, why it's my All passion. Right. I love yeah. that. Yay. Now, I know you brought some tips for us today, and we're ready to hear them. Come on. So, you know I love some tips. Take it away. for some tips? Yes. Okay. So 
I want to first say um, a lot of the tips that I give, you know, all relationships, I mentioned this last time, but all relationships really begin with you, okay? So I'm very clear and cognizant. Like I said, everyone is not searching for love, but at the end of the day, all relationships, that includes friends, family, it starts with you, okay? So tip number one, y'all ready for this one? Mm -hmm. Is to own your stuff and do your work, okay? We've all heard, do your work. Ati Ayama taught us that. Mm -hmm. Doing your work, but what does that look like? So here it is. So when you enter into a relationship, you're responsible for what you bring into it, okay? It's not your partner's job to take on and own and fix. It is your job, it's your responsibility. So just owning your stuff, owning your conditioning. Um, another thing is that personal growth is essential to relational growth, okay? So mm -hmm. that doesn't just mean, you know, romantic. It's any relationship that you desire to grow, you yourself must grow. That's just, it's very plain language. That's how I do things. And then the last thing is very plain language as well. It's be what you desire to receive. So if you desire gratitude, be grateful. Mm. <laughs> if you desire kindness, be kind. If you desire for someone to accept and embrace who you are, do that. It's very simple, but it really is golden and fundamental. Okay, so number two is, I love the term um, relationship pillars. So creating your own relationship, um, establishing rather, your own relationship pillars and boundaries, okay? Now let's imagine pillars. We know what those are, we can envision them. So I always tell couples, you know, clarity and collaboration, right? Clarity eliminates confusion. It helps for couples to kind of know how, what the, what the rules are within their union, okay? So one thing that a pillar does is when, when the storms of life comes, it helps keep the relationship grounded in something, okay? So we all have our own values. When you partner with someone, I like to say, well, establish, you know, collaborate on what your shared values look like, okay? The other thing that that does is it creates boundaries. So if you imagine a pillar, it not only keeps the foundation strong, but, you know, when life and, you know, peanut gallery and outside parties come, it helps to kind of keep you all on the same page. So it mm -hmm. protects from outside influences because only two people can determine what that relationship looks like. I'm very big on that. I don't subscribe to, like, rules and all that. It's you two decide, okay? Number three, thank you. I heard a little clap. I'm going to take it, too. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a little clap. <laughs> I'm like, yes, okay. Um, <laughs> so number three is being clear about roles and expectations, mm. okay? Um, yeah, ooh, see, come on. I love this audience is like the best because all that does is fuels me up. All right, so asking for what you want. I don't know who said that that was against the law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> asking for what you want. Being able to say, hey, partner, you know, and that's on both sides. Life brings challenges. I know expectations is a big one. And depending on the season, like, let's say um, having a baby. Let's say someone is unemployed. Let's say someone wants to go back to school or, you know, perhaps the season might change. It's okay to touch base and just reestablish. Um, expectations can be changed. So I always say, don't feel like you have to be so steadfast. We're like, this person does this, this person has this role, and it stays that way indefinitely. I think a lot of times I run into people who might feel guilty if, you know, the season changes. Some mm -hmm. people might fall into a low season. I, I definitely, one, have experienced it. But, you know, life doesn't always present just a flat ground. Sometimes right. there's grief, there's loss, there's just things that cause people to not be you know, in the same energy and vibration space that they've, you know, been in. So just be okay with that. Talk to your partner. Be clear about that. Yes, yes. be clear. You can stick around for a little bit? Yes. All I would right. Love to. I would love we'll to. be right back, Maria. Yes. We're back with life coach Rhea Williams. You know, can you share some more tips with us? Of course. All right, guys, we're on number four. All right, so number four embracing difficult conversations, okay? There's a quote by John Powell, and it says, communication works for those who work at it. Okay, so creating the time Love that. to have discomfort. I mean, it doesn't have to be uncomfortable. Let me reframe that. Um, just regular check-ins, okay? Just a check-in. I didn't say a rundown of all the things that's wrong. Just a check-in, okay, with your partner. Um, and just creating that time, making it intentional. All right, and the last tip. All right, guys, you ready? We're I ready. Love, this is my favorite tip. Yay, oh, this is my oh. favorite tip. Cultivating, this is one of my favorite words, you guys are getting to know me now, but cultivating the garden of your relationship, right? So think about a garden, okay? A relationship is two living beings in a living, thriving relationship. So what you plant, you will grow. Mm. So the same way you water, come on, I feel y'all, you feel me. What you plant, <laughs> what you, you, plant, will, you will grow. grow. If you plant nothing, you will grow nothing. So plant the, plant the seeds and pluck the weeds, okay? Because otherwise, you're, yeah, come on, <laughs> we together. 
Um, you know, at the end of the day, what you don't tend to will die, okay? That's just fundamental law. Yes. For I don't have a green thumb, but those of you who do know what I'm talking about. So just making sure that you create, and especially for partners who might be busy, life is busy, we all have things, creating that capacity for one another, that's another big one that I see with couples. You just get used to them being there, but you have to create the capacity to know how to tend to each other's needs. It doesn't just happen. So that's my tips, and I know it works no matter what. Yes, no we are ling clinging. Aww. to your tips. Well, I'm learning as I teach. <laughs> you are, oh my God. Okay, so before you go, if there was a couple on the brink of separating, what advice would you give them? Well, first of all, don't rush to make a decision. Sit with yourself and ask yourself, hey, there's something that brought you all together. So I always like lean on those pillars, whatever it was that brought you together. However, if you check in with yourself on both sides and you're not being filled and your relationship is not thriving, I don't advocate to just throw it away, but I definitely say, Create the narrative that works for you, too. Do not listen to outside influences. Do not let societal pressures dictate whether you should stay together for convenience or, you know, just give up too soon. I definitely advocate for love, and I've had the beauty of seeing couples come through amazing challenges and make it work for whatever works for them. So that's what I would say. So well said. We love you here at the happy place. You. Will you come back Thank and you see guys. us? I would love to come back as much as you will have me. Thank you for joining Thank us today. You, to learn more about Rhea and how to cultivate a successful relationship, visit our website. We'll be right back. Yay. Welcome back, guys. I am so excited for summer and to relax somewhere gorgeous. Y'all ever thought about heading to Rhode Island? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Baby, it might be the smallest state, but it's packed with big experiences like beautiful beaches and fresh seafood, which is my favorite. It's the perfect spot to plan your next vacation. So we're playing a new game inspired by this great state called Road Trip. Yeah. Yeah. got an amazing prize for one lucky player. If your name is on the screen, come on down, down, down. Come on down, Kaylin. Yes, Kaylin. Yes, Kaylin. Hi. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Where are you from, Kaylin? I'm from Orange, California. Orange, California? Yeah. Show us some love. Okay, let's see. Here's how to play. It's basically ski ball. Your goal is to score points by rolling balls down the road into the buckets. Since the lovely state of Rhode Island is only 48 miles long, you must score 48 points to win the grand prize. Get it? Oh. You hit it? Aha! Okay, we'll start you off with one ball. But in order to get more, you've got to answer some Rhode Island trivia. Did All you right. catch that, Kaylin? I did. You think you can handle that, Kaylin? <laughs> you know, I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> Y'all believe in it, right? <laughs> okay, let's get this road trip started. Here's the first question. <sighs> she said, Jennifer, I don't know about this. <laughs> okay, true or false? Rhode Island is the smallest state. True. <laughs> you doing that? <laughs> okay. Rhode Island is known as the ocean state. What ocean does Rhode Island border? Atlantic? There you go. Ooh. Give me five. Yeah. That's right. This is the happy place. We help each other. Okay. This, this one should be good. Okay. This woman king star who just became the 18th E. Got grew up in Rhode Island. Viola Davis. Viola Davis, baby. <laughs> we on the road. You got this, girl. Okay. Rhode Island is one of the original 13 colonies. How many states are currently in the U.S.? 50. You better know it. <laughs> you better know it. We got this. True or false? I love you right now. <laughs> Rhode Island has a classic seafood dish called a stuffy. Is that true or false? True. You did that! You sure know your trivia, girl. You answered five questions correctly, so you are getting five balls. It takes 48 points to take the grand prize. You ready to roll? 
Oh, I'm ready. Okay, I want you to get ready for your road trip, young lady. There you go. Take it away. Yeah! Yes, we got 15! 15! Oh, you got this! Yes! 30, 30, 30, 30! Okay, okay, okay. Come on, we got this, we got this, we got this. Listen, come on, that's stuck. You know you gotta do, we gotta try one more time. That's just not at the happy place. Come on. Thank you. Let's get us. <laughs> to visit Rhode Island to experience the Ocean State for yourself. I know all y'all want to go, you know. <laughs> all right, Rhode Island, this is the happy place, so you are all going home with a $100 Breeze Airways voucher to get you there. Compliments of visit. Rhode Island, here you go! Woo! Man, I see y'all all at Rhode Island. You did that. Thank you. Thank you did that. Thank you so much for playing. We'll be right back. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.